Hi, Kami. Hi, guys. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Dan. How are you both? We're good. Fantastic. I love it. I, I, we're usually writing and stuff, which is usually a headache and it's very hard. And this is fun and easy. So, oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, the two of you are brothers, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Okay. So, growing up, did you guys, you know, did you like collaborate a lot together? Like, how did it come to be working together? We would play together. I mean, we were two and a half years apart. So, I think the coolest thing my parents' house had was we had a little tiny jacuzzi size koi pond with okay. a waterfall, with a little rock waterfall, like a little tiny one, but it was like perfect size for action figures. So Kevin and I would, you know, have our shorts on and standing in the water playing GI Joes. And I think a lot of that play is exactly what we're doing now where we're just like imagining okay here's somebody on a grappling hook hanging down from a waterfall and like because it, it felt so real back when we were kids it's like now we actually get to make this stuff so or like after that we started making like little short films together and stuff and we you know have fun with the, with our dad's video camera so yeah it was an evolution I love that. I have two boys. So, you know, I love watching them together and like getting little glimpses of their future, you know? So I, I just love that so much. So, okay. So Star Trek Prodigy, what was the inspiration behind creating it? Uh, it started with Kurtzman saying, you know, where's the entry point into Star Trek? I mean, I, I know that's like a question that a lot of Star Trek fans themselves would have with, they think they would know the answer to, but it's not really, um, there's not a real clean entry point. And so we wanted to make a show that, um, you know, Star Trek is a, is, is a, a little bit of an intimidating canon. It's so big. And there's, I know there's a lot of people out there who are interested in it, but they feel like I don't know enough to jump into the world. And so we felt like we wanted to create something that would both um, please old Trek fans and also embrace people who don't know anything about Trek and really walk them through to get them up to date with what's going on or maybe not up to date but get them get them acclimated mm -hmm. yeah um i i absolutely you know i'm not i don't know much about star trek and i love that i can you know my nine-year-old he is obsessed with like space and sci-fi and you know he doesn't know much about it so i think like we can like learn about it together and it's just like a whole family experience which is great i love finding things that we can you know enjoy as a whole family um that's yeah. my favorite aspect is that you have these like these trek fans who are like all trek fans want to do is talk to other trek fans and so when when a family member starts becoming a trek fan you're like there's hours and hours of conversations to be had in the household which is fantastic so can I, um can i just yeah. add like you know yeah we like to do family entertainment like i wouldn't say we like to do kid entertainment like we're always writing for ourselves but it's because like we it's we're trying to emulate what we grew up on, be able to go to the cinema with my parents and watch E.T. together and to be moved and to be thrilled and scared and cry all together at something. Right. Not just them sitting through a movie with us. Right. So, yeah, absolutely. Being present with them at all times. And yeah. yeah. So the animation, I was super impressed with it. It's totally unique and like everything was is so detailed. Um, you know, it's not it's not cartoony, which isn't a bad thing at all. It's more of like real life. So what was like the thought process, um, you know, just developing this style of animation? It took a little bit as we started to work with our team on it. And one of our most important, you know, the early iterations of our show was a little bit more extreme and cartoony or characters up in the air. This or that. We're like, whoa, 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 this is Star Trek. We need a reality. It needs to be grounded because we didn't want to be some extreme show that's separate from the rest of all the other Trek shows. We, want, we knew we had Janeway. We knew we wanted to bring in other legacy characters. And so we wanted to have a realism, you know, and a reality that's just like the live action films. And I think like the look of the show, you know, so much of that goes to Ben Ebon, who is our lead creative. Um, he is the person who's, yeah. he's working his butt off, looking at every little shot, making sure everything looks fantastic. And he really is a talent. He is a massive talent. Um, a cinematic but, talent, feature but, level talent in a television. And then with, but even with, but even with our crew, like there's times where I'm seeing Star Trek fans 
freezing a, a shot, right? A frame of our show, zooming in and going, look at this prop or this, this the L cars on this or this button or whatever. And I'm yeah, like, that's Jack Gosh. Rossi. That's I'm like, what are they gonna find? Like, is there some mistake? And they're like, no, this was from this. And this is, and I'm like, thank God to our team. Like, I think even down to our prop designers, they're Star Trek fans and they're doing their research and they want it to fit in the world. We're not just trying to make it all up. All those Easter eggs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of your cast, um, you really have, you have a great, great cast. You have um, Kate Mulgrew and you got her. Um, what was the casting process like? Mm. Uh, well, let's say, look, first of all, we knew we wanted Janeway right away. And so it's been an absolute pleasure. And it had to be Kate. There's no way. Yeah, it had to be Kate. Like, Kate's the real just, deal. She's the real deal. She is just, we always go out to dinner together whenever we're actually in the same city together. She, she's amazing. And then like, okay, so like uh, Ella Purnell for Gwyn. We looked at every actress, every voice actor in, in, in LA. It was tough. I remember we're like, you have to be strong and vulnerable. People are like, those are two separate things. How and do do she that? delivered, you know, you were just moved by her voice. She's because she's such a tremendous actor. And right? Brett Gray was someone, I remember we had someone in mind to play Dal, but then Brett Gray came in and we're like, this is actually Dal Rail right here in person. And yeah. his voice just, just, just tickled us to no ends. And then, you know, in the writer's room, we would talk of like, what would a Medusa sound like? What would a non-corporeal genderless person sound like? Um, what would Murph sound like? Originally, we thought we were going to use walrus sounds. We wanted to, we wanted Murph to sound like a real animal. Yeah. Um, and we then knew we like Jankum, we knew, Baker, yeah. Jankum, we knew we wanted uh, like a, a young Danny DeVito, loud and brash. And we're like, Jason Menzukis, he's perfect. And Riley Alzaraki, she was like, she really is the, she plays rock talk. And she's like the heart of the show. You know, she's like, what what would it be like if you put a 10 year old on a starship? And that's we literally what it would sound like. Yeah. And we didn't want, you know, an adult being a kid voice. We wanted a real kid. And it just, it, it, it shows, right? The authenticity of that. Yeah. yeah. Authenticity is huge. I love that. Um, what, both of you, what is your, your favorite character that's on the show and why? Um, I'm a big fan of Zero. I feel like Zero is Zero has some great lines throughout. I mean, we we love them all. You can't say which yeah, is your, you're which like is, which is your what's favorite your favorite child. child? Oh. You know, you're like I'm not gonna say that. I can't. You know, I'm not gonna say it, but I can't. You know what I mean? Like you love each of these characters so much. Gwen is a great character. Gwen is. I mean, they're all they're all fantastic. If Gwen right? goes through so much. Yeah, my heart goes out to her. But you know, I can't say I love her more than the others. That's a that's a that's a that's a mean question to ask there. How dare there. you? How dare you? <laughs> Shame. I kind of like Murph. I'm like a sucker for a cute sidekick. <laughs> yeah. We had no idea. Murph was added last minute because we're like, oh, let's put a funny little pet on it. Oh, it was a and joke. Everyone yeah. loves Murph. We're like, oh boy, we better I hope we do Murph all right because. People love Murph a lot more than we thought. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I bet. I mean, yeah. So um, last question. What are you hoping for families to take away from the series? Um, we talk about like, I, you know, season one is all about communication. And I think, you know, in a world that's a bit divided, I think people need to see that in order for a path ahead, we need to be working together. And, and I think there's strength and diversity. It's, we always talk about Star Wars is a story of one, where Star Trek is the story of many. Mm -hmm. And how do you succeed together? I think that's 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 the takeaway I would love. And my takeaway is just, you know, uh, the people on our team, our advisors and our crew, they're all like, you know, we have an astrophysicist and she's an astrophysicist because of Star Trek, right? And so our hope is we're going to continue Gene Roddenberry's inspired vision and that we might inspire the kids today to fall into math and sciences or arts you know uh, or space exploration you know uh, that would be my dream my nine-year-old wants to be he calls it a spaceman instead of an astronaut so <laughs> perfect that's a perfect <laughs> yeah all right well thank you both so much it was great to talk with you yeah so great thank you so thank much you. Thank, you. All right. thank you thank you